Okay, so I will, uh, I will ask uh, Pedro to uh, uh, start his, uh, uh, his uh, uh, presentation of ideas for uh, the next uh, two years of IS for a site. Pedro, uh, the floor is yours. Okay, okay many thanks. This is um, my views for next generation IS for SI. Okay, but first of all, I, I want to express my, my happiness that Jixin has recovered, he's with us. He's a very <laughs> important person for the China chapter for artificial intelligence research. For our society, I need a great man. And so it is, it is very nice to see him active. But Thank uh, you. He's saying, do not get fatigued, do not, do not get tired. I mean, you should restrict your presentation and your activity today to the minimum. We are inviting you to a seminar some yeah. days or some weeks or some months uh, afterwards so that we can have the debate with you properly. And you will be with sufficient strength to discuss with all of, with all of us together. Yes. Well, and then my second recognition, of course, is to, to Marcin. I mean, he has made very successful the challenge of organizing the conference, a difficult conference in very difficult conditions. And uh, uh, I want also, to, uh, I will talk later about um, um, singular aspects of this conference, but let me remind also that we are in a thread of really great conferences. We have to remind uh, Charidicon in Berkeley 2019, Water War 2017 by Gordana, David Knovic. Your surname is not easy, Gordana. Uh, also remind Wolfgang for Hitler for Vienna 2015, and the first meeting we have of SI for SI in Moscow by Konstantin Kolin. I think it is good reminding the colleagues. And the beginning of, of uh, SI for SA was in the Beijing Feast Conference in 2010 by Jixin Fong, Kan Ouyang, and Fong Ronli. We have to, to, to honor these colleagues too because they did a great job in the, in the um, resuscitating the FIS project and giving birth to the IS for SI project. And let me also remind uh, Michael Petitjan in Paris in, 20, in 2005, because this meeting was very important to, to continue the project. Uh, uh, World Fund also has organized an FIS conference in, two, in 1996. And Michael Conrad, let me, let me open a parenthesis because he was a really a great man, a great biophysicist. He was one of the most cited biophysicists and computer scientists in the States. He was repeatedly invited to artificial intelligence venues, to uh, complexity venues, but he, he wanted something different, something according to his view of the vertical information flow then we, we have sim very similar views, and then we organized the first meeting of FIS in Madrid in 1994. So Michael left us in, in uh, the beginning of 2000 or late uh, 1990, and uh, he, he really was a remarkable person. Well, I, I wanted to continue that um, the pandemics has, has had lots of awful aspects. It's, it's true, awful, tragedy, terrible, terrible. But um, has had a few positive aspects okay. because it has forced societies to run faster in the informational turn. I mean, two years ago, all these virtual activities were just singular things. Um, the, in at universities and companies, the teleworking, the virtual meeting, the virtual teaching, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, th this has been a, a terrible change. 
I am outside the university now and I am outside my research institute now. So I have been living these changes from the outside. And, and my impression is that um, something important has changed to make societies more ingrained with informational matters, with information technology, but also with related aggravated problems of, you know, very well social networks, polarization, uh, radicalization, uh, increased conflict, uh, maybe violence, etc. Well, and then in this context, the, this conference have represented really a shift. Um, and the big challenge has been uh, undertaken and overcome very successfully by Martin, not only him, by the different colleagues who have helped him to organize all these 10 uh, subconferences with such a big names. It was impressive. I must say that for many people um, connecting, going to virtual stuff, etc., um, it takes there is some psychological barrier and it's a little bit difficult. I understand very well because I am one of the procrastinators who was saying, okay, I will connect. I will. Oh no, I should do this because you are at home. You are with surrounded by your usual uh, activities. And then uh, also the, the, the timing, um, well, it was easy to find excuses to say, okay, I will connect tomorrow. I will, I will go to the tomorrow and, uh, um, okay, that's time and I think these psychological barriers will be um, less and less higher in the future. Um, I think that also keeping the record of all these conferences, it's a very good active. And, and the contact with so many different scholars is, is important. Uh, it's one of the activities I will propose that we systematically arrange uh, for every member of the of the board, the, the people of the subconferences or the scholars, he can be related so that we have a, sort of a global st stock of, of brilliant scholars of people of relevance that uh, who knows, maybe, maybe, um, maybe cooperate in some of the ideas that we will suggest later. <clears throat> um, um, perhaps I think most of you will remember the, the proposals I made in, in, in 2019 and 2020 at the beginning about uh, proposals to, to, to have some, some regular activities inside the list, sorry, inside uh, the society, a part of organizing these great conferences that this is a big value. I mean, every two years having one of these conferences is terrific value. I mean, this is, I think this, this is our biggest active of our society and it has to be preserved, maintained and, and, and taken care, not to distract ourselves. I was going in 2020, I was going to, 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 to rekindle the, this proposal and say, okay, let's start blah, 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 blah. But then came the pandemic and, and I think we all, change our mind and, and it was not time to propose things. It was, uh, it was just to, to, to go ahead. Uh, Marcin had to start organization in a very difficult um, condition and moments. And then I, I think it was clear that we, we should concentrate in the fundamental value and to forget about, about attempting, uh, to attempting further changes. Nevertheless, this challenge remains. Um, reading a book by Joseph Henry on the success of our species, I was relatively surprised by a comment he was making that creating new institutions in any society is very difficult. We very often fail creating institutions. And we have to make amendments, we have to dissolve them, we have to recreate them. And, and, and I was thinking, he, he is really right that so many institutions very often are created, they do not work, the, the, the ingraining of these institutions with each other 
in, in, I would say in most countries is problematic. Institutions are like rotten from behind, uh, uh, from within. Um, and I was thinking that, um, a new organization like uh, our society with so many different points of view, so heterogeneous, um, without financing, with, uh, with a very general lack of resources, how could, could we develop the general regular institutional work inside the society without disturbing the main goal of the society? That's, that's in my view an important challenge. And I would propose that during, during next month, um, I will propose a few points that we, we just keep in mind um, that maybe we can do a few, a few things related to, I was saying, first of all, uh, organizing the excellent network, the excellent potential network of contacts we may have. I mean, uh, I don't want to, to cite names. <laughs> I was amazed by some of the names. I mean, particularly, I, I, well, it was um, uh, the talk by Michael Levin. I mean, it was terrific. And it was only maybe 20 something that were there. It is, it is, you say, my goodness, one of the most original ideas in the world about development. I mean, I, this guy, I want to, I, I would write him, of course. I mean, it is, and, and not only him, not only him, at least I, there were 10, 12 people of first, first class. And then how can we, please let's think, how can we systematize this collection also by Gordana, by, by, by Terry, by Wolfan. I mean, uh, why not? Also, in, if we can rekindle the contact with Constantin Colin. I mean, we, we, we have a big active also that we are really an international society, not many members, but we represent, um, uh, I mean, China maybe is the most important national chapter, but if we put together the whole people from the European Union, Union, we have a, an important presence also. And our presence in the US is, is not strong, but it is very relevant. I mean, around Terry, we, we, we have all, do you remember in Berkeley, we, we have leaders of, of critical views of Silicon Valley, et cetera. So this is, this uh, society, this international, uh, scope it has has to be um, extended in, in, in all we can. Well, then I was thinking that maybe we can go to a series of activities, for instance, organization of small seminars, like some of the smaller sub-conferences there were. I mean, I, 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 I cannot organize one of these things, but I think that it was not so difficult by means of these Zoom, uh, uh, um, links, etc., and and we we can have some seminars on, on interesting themes organized by members of the world, not not to not to have an, a burden of, uh, of of being uh, with so many activities, but this is this is interesting. It can attract. It is a way maybe to contact again with some of these scholars I was mentioning. We can also organize in debates debates. I was thinking, for instance, I was going to propose in the future to Yixin, uh, I am ch a champion of natural intelligence. He's a champion of artificial intelligence. Uh, maybe, maybe something can be organized putting in front artificial versus natural. What's, what's, the, the, um, what's the meaning of intelligence, let's say, natural artificial? Um, I was thinking that maybe the possibility uh, related to those who are in university uh, organizing some brief courses on informational matters, also recopilating teaching experiences. In my, when I was in the university, I could uh, impart um, a discipline that was the social history of information, the science, technology, and society uh, come. Um, the social history of information. It was for engineers. They they enjoy. I had, um, usually these these are voluntary disciplines. Only 10, 20 people, and I had more than 60. All 
it was during seven years, so you, I had this discipline. And it was an, an, an excellent introduction to, to, the, to, to some core issues of information. Then we have, uh, I, 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 am, I am thinking often in how can we offer value to people who incorporate, particularly your, your young people, attracting the youth. Those who have to decide their graduate studies, their PhDs, and then mentoring, the possibility of have here mentoring via the society could attract. And if we put fees very low for, for students, et cetera, we, we could attract uh, uh, scores of students who, who want guidance in these uh, wide information studies, but in the widespread study of information that can put him in contact with the, the people involved in the, in the board and also the, the network of the scholars. Uh, uh, I think we should think on providing value for young people. And also I want to remind, of course, the least discussions. Uh, I think the context is now richer than what I was proposing in my points, but I think it can make a modest uh, tool can be a modest tool to to knit in our, our our activities to hear from you from each other more often in, in a very free context outside any organizational constraint that uh, that determines our voting and all these things. Uh, of course, lectures by distinguished scholars. I mean, we can have lectures inviting occasionally to one of these big names or other names. And also, of course, we have talked here about prom promotion of interest of special groups and promotion of national chapters. All this is vitality for uh, internal vitality for our organization, for our society. And uh, I think we will think on this and, uh, and in the strength that we, during next months, crystallize some of these ideas. Okay, we, we will have more fun, we will have more um, excitation, more intellectual life. Well, another possibility that may be interesting that every six months or at least one a year, once a year, we can have a meeting of this board. I mean, this is, this is I think, relatively easy to convene. Um, I am not sure, but I think we could do that. And we we could think about that, and um, and I would like then to 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 enter in some content matters. I just talk the, the the suggestions I make for the future. I will probably I will I will think again about them. I will prepare something brief and something easy, and uh, and everyone can think what participation, what support can him or her provide to, 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 these, to these activities. So I was going now with contents. And, and I will try to make easier life to our um, friendly colleague, Dishin, because I take the opportunity to make some comments on his uh, paradigm shift he proposes. I mean, the, the document he circulated, I think it's excellent. I mean, he's clear, he is concise, he is Cartesian in the proposals he makes. Um, of course, we have to disagree in some specific points, otherwise we wouldn't be scientists. <laughs> we will be politicians. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, but this is a big merit that he proposes a coherent panorama of information science that I think we should admit it, is, it, it can be the core, it can be considered as the core of the whole informational study. If we succeed in a, in, a, in, a, in a consistent view of information science, we, we, we provide a, a, a really a strong, um, a strong position to, to, to the whole information studies, even if we not succeed. I mean, I mean information is too big to be, uh, to, to be corralled into some specific um, um, intellectual edifice. So we must be terribly open, but 
counting with some um, firm position, it's very good. Um, uh, one of the points, one of the good points he makes is the scientific research mentality is still dominated by the physics point of view. Um, this is this is something terrible. I mean, I, I have been sort of 30 or 40 years uh, realizing that you can maybe kill the physicalism in some small uh, field or in some small territory, but it again reappears. <laughs> reappears in the vicinity with another field, probably bigger than the previous one. So it is like the, uh, I think it was the hydra of, of, of seven halves. You can't one and it grows two, maybe. And, and this is a very big problem. Um, and it is really paradoxical that in the informational term we are living, this dominance is maintained. In my opinion, it's clearly maintained. Um, and I think the, the, the proposal, the valiant proposal of Yixin is quite right in, in focusing in this aspect of physicalism. Um, um, I, I have heard very often the comment when I was arguing in that, um, about the, the, the uselessness of the physicalist view in why fields of science, particularly in biology and social science and even neuroscience. I, I don't mean that technologies are wrong or the blah, blah, blah. No, no. It means that the way of thinking is not appropriate. Uh, and and, and uh, I, was, I was often responded, but everything is physical. And I was responding to that, yes, but in different ways. Everything is physical, but in different ways. Do you treat your computer in the same way that you treat any inanimate object? <clears throat> when you treat your computer, you are measuring the mass, the velocities, you are drawing, you are establishing the Hamiltonian, you are looking for the bonds, you are looking for, for the constraints. No, it is quite different. You are learning it by pragmatics, you are maybe using informatics, and there is no physics at all, only a very low level for the people who <coughs> design the chips and for the people who make uh, the, the transistors and the logical gates, they, they, they have to be very good in physics, but for a regular user, for a good user, no physics at all is necessary. So if you tell a computer user, oh, you should apply the perspective of physics, it is, it is silly, it is silly. And uh, also when you talk to someone and say, okay, uh, you, don't, you don't tell what is your mass, what is your velocity, what's your Hamiltonian, et cetera. You say, okay, how are you? How is going your life? Uh, what are you doing lately? So you, you care in a series of things that are related to the life cycle of the person, to the information flow that this person is embedded, et cetera. And, and then not having this well-formed informational perspective so that he can be uh, addressed to, to this special, well, not so special, I mean, living in human societies, you are surrounded by information flows and every living cell is surrounded by its own information flows. That's quite crystal clear. But then you, you, you have, um, I, I have had to cooperate with many molecular biologists in my bioinformation um, works, <laughs> and I was amazed. <laughs> I was amazed. They were um, unable to recognize uh, information, information flows, except uh, in the central dogma of molecular biology, because Francis Crick has said that, and because it was very silly not to not to not to follow that consensus. But uh, nothing else. Nothing else about information. Well, um, I think Jisin is quite right in this focus. And uh, I think that his view of the ecology of knowledge is, um, strikes the right core too. Uh, as uh, in the world of knowledge, uh, if we go to the relationship between, between disciplines, what we find is extraordinary ecology of knowledge. 
And um, uh, I, I will show a couple of, of his slides about that. And also in some parts of his document, he, he used a process, um, artificial intelligence and, and human intelligence. And I am going to suggest to him that natural intelligence may be more cogent for this just a position. And um, and I, I will I will show this 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 slides. One moment, please. Ah, sorry, I, I have not. Uh, may I share the Okay. Compact it? No. Now? Is it okay now? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. Let me. I mean, this is the ecology of knowledge I was talking about. We have in the order of 6,000 different fields. And um, I, will, I will argue later, later that um, the way our communities at large are using the sciences and combining the sciences is not, is not commensurate for the, for, the, for the height of the problems socially we have to confront. And then um, we have to improve. We have to improve our views on, on how uh, societies can handle the ecology of knowledge. I mean, it is, it is something I, I think it is very important. Um, uh, when I was talking about, about uh, the, the, the three, artificial intelligence, natural intelligence, and I am including social intelligence because if we have a glance on hard problems, um, we, we are now in a time of, of a strong social change and, and many of the crystallized intelligence of our societies in the form of institutions, of a, in the form of networking of companies, of associations, of, uh, I mean, all, the, all the, 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 the laws, the parliaments, the political parties, all these, all these varieties should ingrain within social, in the, in the highest degree possible of, of social intelligence. And we have now many challenges, introduce some of them by the new communication technologies. Remember that, that uh, in, uh, in modern times, the origin of, so to speak, of modern democracy was, was absolutely related to the modern way of communication by printed books. So printed books shattered medieval societies, feudal societies, and there was the advent of, 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 of so to speak, of parliamentary democratic societies, revolutionary societies at the beginning. And I think that we are now living a time where, the, um, so to speak, the modern societies are suffering this, this I don't know whether explosion or maybe implosion due to some to some uh, problems, to some trouble, serious troubles in their in the cohesion of their social intelligence, and I think that um, I, I made here in the right. You can see that um, there are um, intersections between these fields of natural intelligence. Um, I, have put, I have put here. The three, the three intersections. I think the intersection of, of the common intersection of artificial and natural and, and social intelligence. I mean, about uh, brain information theory. We don't have um, efficient workable brain information theories. We don't have uh, sound approaches to social emotions. We don't have sound approaches to emergent collective dynamics. And we don't, now very well to say about systemic disruptions. Um, we have had, I'm sad to say that we have had the experience of the recent experience of that country in Asia that we have seen a, a, a forcibly modern society how was collapsed into very rural forms, very primitive forms 
almost completely devoid of, of social intelligence. It is very crude. And uh, if we want to promote better use of knowledge, uh, more social intelligence and, 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 and a more viable future, we have to, to, to tackle our global problems and social disruptions and political and religious conflicts in, 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 with a better use of the accumulated knowledge with the 6,000 disciplines, how this can be done. Well, this is one of the big goals for all disciplines, uh, including, including information science, information studies. I don't mean that we are going to solve anything, of course, but we can contribute a little bit to, a, to an improve, to a, to a tiny improvement in this matter. So, I mean, the, the, the triple convergence of these realms of, of intelligence and information, I mean, there can be no intelligence without information flow, and there can be information flow without intelligence. And these three realms should be distinguished, the artificial, the natural, and the social, and understood better. And, uh, and that's it. That's it. It's my my presentation, and I think I think we could just we should keep an eye, as of course, when many people in science and in our board and in very well in these global intelligence problems. But I think we have a genuine uh, voice, different. Every voice is different, but ours ours can can bring a little more meaning. We are just in the intersection of natural science and social science. And these are two, two great bodies of knowledge that do not match very well. And in our society and in our activities, they match well. And I think that's all I conclude um, with a warm message again to Jishin. It is very nice. I was very preoccupied. And also my, my final recognition to Marcy and all the people who have helped to organize such a brilliant conference. And that's it, many thanks. Thank you, Pedro. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, uh, very insightful talk. Uh, we are... Uh, Gustavo was uh, uh, here, but uh, if uh, Gustavo, are you here? Gustavo, you are not here. Yes. Okay, uh, yes, you are here. Sorry, okay, uh, my colleagues. Hi, Gustavo. Thank Hi. you for coming. Well, okay. Thank you for coming and congratulations for uh, giving us. So. Uh, we, we know that you had a lot of problems, so we'll not keep you all, uh, long, but I, I thought it would be good that uh, we have a chance to see you and someone uh, in the future maybe we should prefer some kind of more um, uh, extended presentation of Brazilian chapter. But thank you very much for coming. And we'll move to the next uh, uh, part of the program. Uh, uh, here is what we have in the plan uh, presentation of uh, the uh, project uh, paper by Yushin. I'm not sure if Yushin will present it or someone will uh, present for, for Yushin. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Are you planning to make your presentation or maybe someone uh, will be uh, presenting uh, for you? Yes, I, I myself to do the presentation. Okay. Great, great. Okay. Yes, um, excuse me. Yes. Uh, consider my suggestion that you just pass the transparencies. You don't need to talk very much. You, sure, you have made great transparencies. You just pass them, and if you wish you make some final comments. So you you have to take care of yourself. Yes, yes. Thank you. Well, 
I just say a few words before my uh, formal presentation. Uh, with Pedro as a co-chair for the, during the time to uh, 2021 to 2023, I think there are two aspects uh, we have tried to do. One is organizational affairs. The other is academic affairs. As far as organization affairs, I think, uh, or I suggest, we must try to encourage and help to establish more chapters or six uh, special interest groups because chapters and uh, six will uh, organize more people as uh, active members of S uh, IS4SI. Uh, for example, China chapter, uh, here at the moment, we have more or less uh, 200 people as members. They get together to discuss some uh, important issue in the information science, uh, information philosophy, information technology, information economy, and information society. This, this organization, I think it is very good uh, so it can make good contribution to the IS4SI. SIG also uh, will have very active uh, function as uh, Wolf, Wolfgang presented, uh, pre presented before. Uh, they have many seminars, discussions, and uh, uh, many different form of uh, activities. Those activities can also be uh, pushing forward the ac uh, academic study, uh, going deeper and wider. So I want, uh, I hope in the two years, we'll have more chapters as I suggested before, it may be possible to establish chapter in US, uh, U United States, uh, in Europe, and uh, in India, in Japan, and so on. So if we have five, six, or even more chapters, and then I as for as I, we have a number of pillars, uh, great pillars, and then the society will be a very strong, very powerful, very stable. So this is uh, organization uh, affairs. I think we should pay attention to. Uh, in academic affairs, what I would like to uh, uh, present my view is, as we saw before, I think we are facing a very critical time uh, before the time or till now. Uh, we are experiencing the uh, physical science dominated. But since the Second, Second World War, information science or information discipline has been growing up very quickly. So uh, the science uh, may have a turning point to become information science dominate. 
this is transition from physical science dominating to information dominating. These two sides will be opposite and complemented, complemented to, to each other. So uh, during the trans, uh, trans, transport, uh, transformation time, there is a very great thing we should be able to note that is paradigm revolution. So my title uh, for my presentation today, and I want uh, in the two years we would make uh, more attention to do the research to study the paradigm revolution. Now I will make a little bit more explanation about the paradigm re revolution. First, what is information discipline? Or what is uh, SI as the machine, uh, machine uh, mentioned? The discipline of information, to my understand, uh, it can be expressed by this model. So the model of information discipline. Any subject in one side and the object in environment on the other side, they are interact to each other. Usually uh, the object will generate information we call the object information applied to the subject and the subject will have certain goal and we have certain amount of knowledge and have some a priori strategy and therefore when receiving the object information the subject will try to generate uh, its own action and the action must be intelligent. Otherwise, the goal will be not able to reach and uh, the, the environment may be, uh, uh, some law may be broken. So the action must be intelligent. Therefore, object information applied to subject and the subject generate intelligent action, react to the environment, to the object. This is a cycle. This is an interaction between subject and object. And within the interaction, anything related to the information are what we should study. So they form what we call the information discipline. If we uh, expand it later, we can see what is the content of the information discipline. And uh, from other point of view, we can say ecological chain of the information within the subject and object interaction should be the target as the studies of information discipline. Okay, from the point of view of a holistic system. This is a general model, very simple, but a very deep. Let's go further next. Uh, this is the, uh, the model as uh, as we see uh, at the last page, subject, object, object information applied to subject, and then intelligent in action will be generated by subject. Uh, action will be react to the object, and then there will be uh, endless process. 
if we expand the model in more detail, we can see object information on one side and intelligence action on the other side. And then what process within the middle that will be first perception. The subject will perceive the object information and then generate perceived information. This information is different from object information, but it is from object information. I will explain the perceived information uh, again. It consists of three components. One is the form. Second is the value. The form, whether the, the, whether the form is valuable to the goal of the subject or harmful to the goal of the object. If it's object, uh, if it's valuable, and then it will be trans, uh, transferred to the next stage. If uh, it is harmful uh, to the girl, it will also transfer to the next stage, how to deal with it. But if the object information has nothing to do with the girl, and then uh, the system will be stopped there, nothing to do. So PI or perceived, perceived, uh, perceived information is the output of the perception. Okay, this one element within uh, uh, the inner process. And, and then, we have cognition. Cognition is perform such function to transform uh, the perceived information into knowledge. Okay, knowledge is essential, and information is phenomenal. So knowledge. Uh, since the subject has the knowledge, the uh, subject will have deep understanding about the object. And uh, this is the second element. Further, it will be strategy uh, making, strategy. How to deal with the object? We need the strategy, okay? The strategy, of course, must be uh, remember what is go. The strategy should be uh, reach the goal. So the output is intelligent strategy. Intelligent strategy will tell us how to deal with this object and then reach the goal, solve the problem, okay? So this is the third element. And finally, this uh, executive uh, element, which will transfer intelligent strategy into intelligent action. And then the action will be react to an object. So inter uh, information discipline should exist, uh, consist of object information, perceived information, knowledge, intelligent strategy, intelligent action, and uh, other elements. At least this is the kernel of information discipline. This is my understanding. And all the elements form for uh, form the AI. So this is the backbone of AI or artificial intelligence. In other words, artificial intelligence is also the content 
of information discipline. Again, so information discipline is a large umbrella in which we have communication, computer control, artificial intelligence, and so on. Okay, so it is very uh, principal content to study. Yes, uh, this is another expression about uh, information discipline, sensing, communication, computing, uh, perception and cognition, strategy making, and post, uh, post processing, communication again, and intelligent strategy execution, and so on. And if there is some error, and then the error is new information about uh, the object, it must go into the input and go through the loop again, 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 and then to optimize the strategy, finally to reach the goal, satisfactory. And this, uh, this is another ex uh, expression to see how information discipline from the original uh, step uh, to the artificial intelligence. There are a number of stages. Stage one, we call it initial stage. The feature for initial stage is all the information element has only one single function. For example, sensing, function of sensing is just to obtain information, nothing more, only one, one function. And communication has only one function, which is information transferring. So information obtaining or acquisition uh, for sensing, information transferring for communication and then information processing that is computation, and then information execu execu execution that is controlling. So sensing, communication, computation, controlling, all have one single function. This is because of divide and conquer. This methodology uh, making information science te technology into divide into sensing, communication, computing, controlling. Uh, divide information into the four elements. Divide and divide and uh, uh, con control. Uh, uh, the second stage, the feature for the second stage is from one single function to integrate some functions, but also not compete. Also part function like internet. Internet is consists of communication and compute. Com uh, compute computation. So it have uh, information transferring, information processing. So internet has two kind of functions, rather one, a rather single one. IOT means internet of things, uh, internet of things. It consists of sensing internet controlling. So it has function of information acquisition, 
information transferring, information processing, information execution. So IoT has collect all the information function together, but is not completed. So we are coming to the third stage, advanced stage. The feature for the advanced stage is they have complete function, as we can see from the table. Artificial intelligence is advanced stage. Uh, it consists sensing to obtaining information, communication to transfer information, computation to do some pre-processing, and then perception to know what is the form of object and what is the value of the object what is the content or the meaning of the object? So perception is a uh, very, very new or very important to the AI. Uh, sensing cannot be, uh, uh, sensing cannot place the rule for perception. Yeah because the sensing only obtaining information, but sensing cannot understand what information is, okay? It only gets the information, but don't understand the information. Perception can understand the information, understand the form, understand the value, understand the, the content or the meaning. And then AI should have cognition. Not only understand the information of the object, but also should understand the knowledge about the object. Then the subject understand the object deeper, uh, thoroughly. And then further to make strategy, intelligent strategy, how to solve the problem, how to deal with the object, okay? So strategy is needed to solve the problem. And then through the execution, to transform intelligent strategy to the intelligent action. Action can change the state of the object to reach the goal, okay? And then if uh, there is some error, we need optimization. So this is to show AI, artificial intelligence, is only one member of in information discipline. So we must pay attention, not only to communication, not only to sensing, not only to computing, not only to controlling, okay? Not only to internet, not only to IOT, but also to AI. Those are the target we, the research of in information discipline, should be able to understand, should be able to do the research. Well, another concept is paradigm. I suppose Professor Shi has given some explanation to the paradigm. I just quickly uh, referred. Generally speaking, paradigm is the world view and action manner. World view is how to see, 
how to understand the word. The word, what is the word? Okay, this is the word view. Action manner is how to deal with the word. So the two parts, one part is what is the will. Second part is how to deal with the will. So these two plus together give us a complete uh, methodology uh, and uh, scientific view. So in scientific area, the paradigm is scientific view and scientific methodology. What is the scientific uh, discipline? For example, what is information discipline? This is scientific view. And how to do information discipline? This is methodology. The, the importance of the paradigm of a discipline is that it is a supreme force guiding research activities in that discipline. In other words, par paradigm or scientific view and the methodology is the highest level of guiding force for the researchers to do to do the research. So this is very important. Okay. Now till the moment we have two category of scientific discipline. One is discipline of a physical science. This discipline has lasted for more or less 400 years. Uh, but since Second World, World War, or um, later or earlier, the second, second one occurred, that is discipline of information science. So this is a two big discipline in our reality, no more, okay? In other words, discipline of physical science will have paradigm of physical science and the discipline of information science should have paradigm of this discipline of information science. And then I will ask everyone, do you know what is the paradigm for information science or for information discipline? This is a big question. So I say the problem we, are, we have been facing is the following. The paradigm employed in information discipline has been physical, uh, has, has been the paradigm for physical science, not for information science, because no one knows what is, in, what is a paradigm for information science. <laughs> I, I don't know, Pedro, you know, whether you know what is a paradigm for information discipline or any other friends. Let me show you a table, very interesting and very important. Now, this column, uh, this line, this rule, okay, is a paradigm of physical discipline. As I mentioned, there are two parts. One is scientific view. 
the other is methodology. For the paradigm of physical discipline, its scientific view is matter. Okay? The object for physical discipline is matter. More specifically, purely objective, no subjective. In physical science, no subjective factor. Do you think so? No, absolutely no. And uh, what they want to do is only to understand the structure of the object. Okay, this, this is the view. Uh, objective structure. This is what they want. Methodology. The methodology for physical discipline is a reductionism. Purely formal description. Because they want to understand the structure and the structure can be described by mathematics, by formal mathematical means, okay? So purely formal description. And the other methodology is divide and conquer. If the object is too complex, they just cut, cut, cut. Divide them to a number of uh, subject, uh, sub object, each of, of them seem to be more simple, simpler, okay? This is paradigm for physical discipline. We are the research in the information discipline are also using this kind paradigm, I believe, rather than paradigm for information discipline. Let me, let me, let me see. Information discipline, the object of course is not matter, but information. Matter and information is opposite to each other, but complementary to each other, okay? Inform information process, uh, more particularly, they uh, concern information process within subject and object interaction. We, we see the model just now. Uh, subject, object, object information apply, and the intelligent uh, action react. This is the in information within subject object interaction. Uh, what they are concerned is double win for subject and object. So, as you can see, they are quite different, even completely different. Let's see the methodology. Information discipline will, should have also different uh, methodology we call information ecology. Rather than purely formal description, we should holistic description. Holistic description means we should be able to use form, value, content, or meaning, the three trinity, uh, using the trinity to describe the object, to describe the information. But now we are dealing information just in form, zero, one, zero, one, okay? Zero, one, zero, one are form. We do know zero, one, zero, one is good or bad. We do know whether zero, one, zero, one, what is the meaning, okay? And uh, 
rather than divide and conquer, we stress on ecological deduction. We must uh, treat them using the holistic system, okay? So as you can see, the paradigm for physical discipline and for information discipline is quite different. Scientific view different. Methodology also completely different. And then I just take example, uh, AI, artificial intelligence. SI uh, is the same, okay? Let me take the example, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, the research consider their object is matter, brain. They consider brain is the object, research object, okay? So purely objective, not Yixin's brain, not the Pedro's brain, not the machine's brain. It's an objective brain, okay? So no subjective. And only want to understand the structure of the brain is concerned, right? So as you can see, AI, uh, the scientific view for AI is the same as the scientific view for physical discipline is completely different from the scientific view of information discipline, right? So they are the same and they are different, completely different. Uh, and then we can see the methodology. In AI, artificial intelligence, they also use reduction. As we know, at the moment, AI has been divided into three parts. One part is neural network, okay? Or artificial neural network. The second part is expert system. And the third part is uh, sensor motor system. So divide and conquer using divide and conquer AI. And the AI also using purely formal description to describe all artificial intelligence process. And then you can see from this table, AI, the high member of information discipline, a brother, but using the par paradigm as physical discipline. No one use the paradigm of information discipline. That is very, very big problem. That is, I said, the transition, transition from physical discipline dominate age to information discipline dominate age. The, trans uh, the transition must be paradigm revolution, okay? Because AI as a high member of information discipline must use the discipline of information discipline, not this one, but this one. So great revolution. Then this is my conclusion. Paradigm revolution is unavoidable, unavoidable. Okay, we must experience paradigm revolution. And then lastly, having faced the problem of paradigm miss employment, what we should do. Let's invite our respect panel members 
to provide advices. And then I will invite uh, Martin to say a few words about your opinion, how to do in, oh. uh, in front of uh, facing of the paradigm revolution. Okay, uh, thank you very much Yishin, for very insightful <laughs> presentation and very visionary uh, view of uh, what is uh, what we are facing. Uh, now you ask a very important question: what we should do? And yes. here I think uh, uh, we should look uh, at one aspect, which is. But historically, changes of paradigm were uh, coming not so much like mandated or uh, designed, but they were coming with fresh ideas. Uh, when we look back, for instance, we can see that Einstein, when he uh, sent his fir first article, which started uh, development of uh, relativity, uh, he sent it to Annals of Physics. His article was very different from articles typically sent to uh, Annals of Physics. Typically, yeah. Annals of Physics had very, very formal uh, articles. Einstein's article was uh, written in relatively simple language. It was revolutionary, but it was simple language. Mm -hmm. now, yeah. You can see that uh, editors of Annals of Physics uh, had this wisdom to not to reject it because it looked like not very sophisticated. Mm -hmm. But they recognize how important are new uh, ideas proposed by Einstein. Unfortunately, when we go back into history, we can see many examples where uh, uh, young, new people, when they proposed their ideas, they were misunderstood. They were mm. either rejected or ignored. Now, there is mm. all the story of Galois, Evaris Galois, uh, uh, who had his idea about solving um, uh, uh, polynomial equations. And uh, his ideas were misunderstood uh, and um, unfortunately in very um, uh, young age he was killed and only many years later yes. the depth of his ideas were recognized and we can find lots of other examples for instance yeah. Grassmann. Grassmann was a teacher in uh, in high school, he wanted to uh, have academic career. He wrote his ideas in a book, but nobody bought his book. He sent his book to many mathematicians, but mm. the importance of his ideas were not recognized. So it, uh, it was ignored. And uh, Grassmann uh, never uh, got position at the university. And actually he was, at his uh, time, he was more recognized as a specialist in Latin language than in mathematics. It was only later that it was recognized that this uh, was work of, of a, a genius. Uh, there is example of Cantor, whose work was criticized and ignored and who spent many years in mental institution. Yeah. Uh, later, his work was recognized, so he recovered from this. Uh, yeah. It is an example of Turing. Uh, his work also was uh, basically uh, not recognized. Part of, of, of this, but basically marginal side of this was that uh, he had to hide some of his work related to cryptography. But uh, even work which was not, for instance, when he wrote his very famous article about uh, computing machinery, 
yes. his boss, who was grandson uh, of, of, of Darwin, uh, said, oh, this is like a childish high school essay. It would compromise <laughs> vision of our institutions. Uh, but uh, Turing insisted it was published in mind, and this is now one of most important papers in uh, in the uh, domain of uh, artificial intelligence. Yes. So uh, I can uh, see many examples where fresh ideas were ignored, were misunderstood. So I yes. see uh, uh, as very important. Uh, is to create conditions that uh, young people, people not necessarily young, but who are coming with new ideas, but who do not have recognition, who do not have yet name or position in academic world. Uh, we have to make sure that they are at least not all ideas brought by young people are available. But we have to have the same wisdom as editors of Annals of Physics who accepted paper of Einstein. We have to have the same uh, wisdom to uh, accept and to promote ideas of uh, young people, uh, newcomers to, to information studies, to support them, to give them opportunities to develop their ideas, to present their ideas. And I think he is very important role of IS4SI is to uh, help people to uh, formulate uh, their research programs, to support them, to share uh, their work. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, good. I think we must be changing. I agree with you. And then I, I don't know whether Terry is here. Terry? I, I didn't see him. So Terry probably is not here. OK. So Godana. Hello, I am here. Hey. Yes, I see you. <laughs> OK, great. Great. Thank great. you very much. Thank you very yeah. much. Uh, thank you Eugene, for, for uh, inviting me to the panel and thank you very much for your presentation and you. both to, to you and to Pedro who are uh, really visionary in your in your thoughts about the future of, of our field so I think I, I would say we need uh, uh, many young people, as, as Martin said, but we also must listen to old people and even to people from previous yes. generations. What uh, fascinates right. me are generations of, of great scientists like, like yes. Heinz von Forster, who, 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 who was the leader of, of this biocomputing laboratory, uh, who, who was so much in front of his time and, and, yeah. and we didn't uh, listen to him and we didn't uh, listen to many people from uh, cybernetics and from, mm -hmm. from many, many previous generations who, who have come with uh, really great ideas. And, and uh, we should also all the time uh, look at the future, but also look at the past, which has so many right. great ideas. Right. So I see today I was listening to, to the lectures in logic and people talking about exclusion of the third and the comparison between dynamics uh, of logic and the, uh, yeah. seeing the, the contradiction in terms of a new paradigm of logic. Yes. And then, yes. then I, I'm looking at why are we thinking in terms of reductionism? Because we are trained or it is much easier to think just <laughs> white and black and just permanent yeah, picture, yeah. no dynamics, no, no big That's ecology right. where we interact with each other, where things are changing, as you say, we need really, and not only to change ourselves, but also to understand change and to take change in, in our thinking and thinking about logical basis of our sciences mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. a, a, a about the, the future of our, our domain. So I think yes. uh, there are 
great ideas that you, you are presenting here, and uh, I, I agree totally with you that we must go towards ecological uh, understanding of the field and yes. dynamical yes. understanding and taking mm. in this uh, artificial intelligence as, as, a, as a new paradigm, not redu reductionist, but, but, mm. uh, but uh, the, the, the okay. new synthetic uh, systemic view. So, so I, I just, uh, of course, have no recipe how, how can we uh, get more people into the system. But, for example, this conference that Martin organized really attracted so many new people, even from artificial intelligence, robotics, bi biology, mm. bioinformation, mm. many yeah. other people. Yeah. So I, I believe that if we, if we uh, get this information about our existence and what we are doing and what is important for us, uh, attract new people. And so uh, it, it could help to, to somehow establish this new paradigm, which is necessary. Yes. Absolutely. Good. Good. Thank you, Godana. Very Thank good. <laughs> I agree with you. OK, uh, next, uh, may I ask uh, Wolfgang? Yes. Okay. Yes. Please. Thank you so something. much. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay. I hope to be short. I could talk now. I think also half an hour or so. But um, <laughs> yes, should do <laughs> no, better. I, I will. I will come to the point. Um, first, I agree in, in principle with the intention you have that you mm. say we need a, a paradigm change. Yes. Um, I would add also. Uh, we should also change the paradigm in physics, not let mm -hmm. them do it uh, as they do. No, the paradigm uh, change is already underway. It started, mm -hmm. as you rightly said, in, in the 60s, last century. It's, mm -hmm. it's revolving about self-organization. And you are today right. we can talk about complex systems, few, and this is what... And what you, you are hearing something about the information physics. You are... Uh, yeah. information chemistry yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and uh i i have uh, one uh, let's say um one one important uh one important point to do i think the paradigm uh which we should have in uh, in in um in our discipline or not it's not a discipline because it's a trans discipline what we are doing here <laughs> So yes. um, it is. Uh, it must be humane, uh, and and you described it very nicely. Uh, what yes. is the difference to the physics paradigm? And yeah. you can say, okay, yes, it is really humane, or it is human centered. It is humanistic, and this means then um, that uh, also, if we talk about AI, it must also yes. be humane and not like yes. the. Um, yes. And I have now a question, and I see a, 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 I see a fear, I see a danger. The danger mm -hmm. is you uh, had a you had a slide in which you showed AI uh, on the functions and and in the three developments. You said mm -hmm. there is uh, in the first step is oh, there are only single functions. The second step is yeah. there are integrated yeah. ones, and the third step, the advanced step, there would be a complete. Uh, yeah. uh, integration of all functions, perception, mm -hmm. cognition, strategy, optimization. And my question is, if this would be the description of the really third step of AI, I would be scared. <clears throat> because uh -huh. I think this is the physics uh, mm -hmm. uh, paradigm, which is working uh -huh. here, and not uh -huh. our not our humane information. Paradigm. Why? Uh -huh. Because everything which is humane, which is a, a which was a human property, is now transferred mm -hmm. to a machine, mm -hmm. to, a, to, an, to an artificial thing, which is said to be as good as we humans are. And this okay. is dangerous. Why? Because uh -huh. it will do harm to the autonomy of the humans. Uh -huh. It is said machines are autonomous. That is AI. Uh -huh. AI in the third advanced complete step would be autonomous. This is mm -hmm. what is bad for us because mm -hmm. it would, first, it is not true because in a machine will never be autonomous. But we say, we say autonomous. It's a, it's a, wrong, <laughs> it's a wrong category. 
because Why? we cannot be autonomous. But um, the important thing is, if we say, okay, the machine shall decide, uh, there's a drone, it shall decide if this is an enemy uh, and mm -hmm. shall push, um, shall, shall launch a, ra a, a rocket on, 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 on this person and so on. This mm -hmm. means that we are outside of the, um, of the loop. We are, uh -huh. so it, the decision, it is said decision, they make decisions, AI is doing decisions, and this is wrong. The decision should be made by us, and uh, AI should always be a tool for us and nothing else. So this is what I want to say. Thank okay, you. very good comments. But uh, may I say the decision has two different levels. Higher the level, the highest level can, can only be made by human beings. Okay. But, uh, the lower level can be made by machine itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Pedro, Pedro, my friend, Pedro. Uh -huh. no. Sorry, I have not connected. Well, hey, Pedro. Uh -huh. I, I would like to ask you to say something about paradigm revolution. Well, <laughs> First, I, I think that somehow um, maybe we have exaggerated a little bit about physicalism and physics. I think that yes. physics is a very, very rich discipline. People in physics have used analysis, synthesis. There have been great, terrific historical synthesis. I, I don't know, from Newton to Maxwell to Boltzmann to Gibbs in thermodynamics. Great, extraordinary synthesis, maybe not um, all encompassing, but very well focused and very, very practical and very deep conceptually. The problem I see is that the, in the use of disciplines, particularly outside physics, people don't get a clear idea on how disciplinary knowledge has to be used. And they have a hierarchy and they say, uh, highest in the hierarchy, physics. Oh, I will, I will follow its abstract between quotation methods and I will follow it. And later on, maybe the next one, chemistry, etc. And they make a hierarchy, and they, they close their minds and they don't enter um, interesting um, ideas related to information because in, in because we have to recognize that the, this new information paradigm is half baked. It's half baked. It cannot compete yet. And I think one way it could advance uh, could be in the dialogue between artificial intelligence and natural intelligence. Because some of the little problems I see in your scheme could be illuminated by, by what happens within the living system. For instance, you talk about object information. This is, this is really tricky because object information, any object, this glass, for instance, do you see my little glass? Mm -hmm. This glass, I mean, contains lots of object information, but lots, open-ended, open-ended. <laughs> we must dialogue in advance to tailor all this open-ended information and say, Okay, we will concentrate the objective information. We will consider is shape, mm -hmm. no more, no composition, not aspect, no the little painting that it has, no the color, not. So I mean, uh, objective information it should be is objectified information, tailored for the system or for the sensory variety we are talking about, and we must recognize. It, it is open-ended and also uh, um, also a little problem I see is that you, uh, your system is driven from entering uh, object information, perceptual information, but mm -hmm. in the living system <clears throat> it's not that way. We have inner information, inner drives that tell you, you uh, that tell me I am thirsty. I'm hungry. I should go to sleep. I sleep mm -hmm. and I wake up automatically 
by my inner information. And this inner information takes me to act in the world and to find, yes, and to find that objectivized information. If I am thirsty, I will ignore everything about this glass and I will only sip a little, a little sip of water. <laughs> That's all. And your intelligence system should be the same. But you need the, the, the inner structure of commands derived from the goals of the system, and particularly in, in all the uh, fields of natural intelligence, there is the light cycle, life. I mean, when we think on artificial intelligence impinging on our societies, we, we should think impinging on, on our lives, in all the dimensions, activity networks were, were involved. And the problem is that people working in artificial intelligence have this, uh, often this uh, lack of um, knowledge and civility, and they are like brute algorithm, brute approaches, uh, and, and, uh, and the impact it, they may have in society. We have learned these days about uh, Instagram and Mark Zuckerberg. I mean, he, he, he knew that uh, there could be important psychological problems a few years ago, and he, he was not interested. He was not interested. Mm. Mm. Um, so I think that if we um, consider uh, the physicalist approach and the informationalist approach, we may live in a limbo in many other disciplines and we have to keep very open-minded to, to, to continue baking our, our information paradigm in, 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 a, in a robust way before premature closures. That's my, mm -hmm. that's my mm -hmm. and particularly okay. I emphasize. Uh, I think your scheme is very good. I have said before, it's, <laughs> clear, it's Cartesian, it's very good to discuss. And particularly, I think it is good, it is good to confront it with mm -hmm. the basic ideas, not Baker yet, of, a, of natural intelligence, thinking always in, in, in the problems of our society in social intelligence. Okay. That's okay. The, the, our, the our Thank you, Pedro. Very good. And then uh, I will invite Mark. Mark? Yes. Is I'm Mark here? here? And I am going yes. Please, to Mark. Also, I'll yes. try to be very brief because of time restrictions. So uh, I would like to start with a remark that there is no generally accepted definition of intelligence. Even more, there is no consensus on what intelligence is. In the attempt to better understand what intelligent is, what is done in the area of AI, and where to move further in this area, I suggest the stratified componential approach to intelligence in general and to artificial intelligence in particular. What does it mean? That uh, we can consider three uh, basic strata of intelligence. At first, the lowest strata is that we consider a system intelligent when it can solve some complex problem or carry out some complex activity. We can call this local intelligence. Examples of intelligent problems are such games as chess or Go, as well as image recognition. Examples of an intelligent activity are conversation as in the Turing test or a robot that performs an intelligent task. A system of local intelligence can be simply called a problem solver. So what we have now are actually only problem solvers. Mm. Uh, it is a unit component approach to intelligence where one problem is a unit component of intelligence. The second approach considers intelligent system as a system that can well function 
in a definite domain, which demands solving a group of complex Mm -hmm. Hey, no voice. Mark, we lost, we lost no voice. Mark, we no voice. This yeah. The okay. Approach to intelligence, and the third approach, and uh, the third strata, in which a system is intelligent when it can efficiently function in complex conditions or successfully survive in the hostile environment. It is, we can call this global intelligence. And in each of these stra strata, in each group, we can separate different levels of intelligence. Mm -hmm. To be able to perform, even to perform arithmetical operations without technical devices is also a kind of intelligence, although it is a very low intelligence by the criteria of the contemporary society. And when we speak about functioning in complex conditions or successfully survival in the hostile environment or even functioning in a definite domain, we come to the ecological approach to intelligence in general and to artificial intelligence. So it's necessary to take environment uh, into account when we study intelligence. And my last remark is that actually is physics also is moving uh, to the ecological approach because physicists more and more understand the importance or even vitality of an observer. And what does it mean an observer? An observer is the environment of a physical system. So that's all what I wanted to tell. Hey, Yishin. Yishin, are you? Okay, so, uh, let's go. Joseph, yeah, it's Joseph still. Yeah, 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 but... I'm here. <laughs> Thank you, Ichi. Ichi, nice to see you again yeah. and out there. Can you hear me? Yes? Well, Ichi. I will, I just wanted to say yes. that... Uh, that I think there's a principle missing on the. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Uh, a principle we, we missing can hear on you. The, in the physical paradigm as well. And uh, I like to use the word non separability for that. And this is trying to say that as we look for solutions to the problems that we have, to try to avoid absolute distinctions. And for example, even between subject and object. And the idea that there is uh, a need for a change in logic is, is extremely important also. If we want a logic of change, it cannot be like the bad old binary logic. And that's where I think there is a lot of work to be done. So with that, I'll, I'll, I'll leave the, the end of the meeting proceed as it should. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if uh, Yishin is still. Uh, Please. 
he did connect to the audio again. He succeeded in connecting. Oh, oh, okay. Yushin, can you hear us? No. no, it does not hear us. Cannot answer at least. Okay. I'm also, I think he does not hear us. Look. No. He's doing something. No, else. no, don't look at the screen. Uh, he has two windows. And one yes. is is where he does not hear and cannot interact. Now he has yeah. another. Yeah, he's back. Hello. Hello, Yishin. Mm -mm. Audio no. problems. Okay. No. Team, are you around? Yishin. Can he read our our chat? So we say goodbye to him and wish him all the best. Mm. Yes. Okay, while we are waiting for Isin, I would like once more to thank Martin for good organization of the yes. summit. Yeah. And for being a president of our society and for all his efforts. I would also like to know a very good work of Wolgan uh, with uh, interest groups. And mm -hmm. I think this was very impressive what Wolgan did. Thank you. <laughs> uh, may I say something? Uh, during the last stages of the conversation, uh, I was thinking, is there something in common between computers and living beings that differentiates from, from inanimate matter, from physical systems? Mm -hmm. And then a term has come to my mind, codes. 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 Mm -hmm. codes. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, computers may have a very complex architecture because they have different codes. Mm -hmm. These codes connect different functionalities at different hierarchical levels, mm -hmm. but the computer is based on codes upon digital stuff. Biologically, we discover it was fundamental, the biological code, but after the biological code, we discovered that even bacteria have several other codes, and we eukaryotes have dozens of different codes. And even there is a hierarchy of codes particularly for development. So codes are means to convey information from one realm, from an architecture to an architecture by means of logics. They have built by logical rules, every code maybe. And then there is something I cannot go ahead because I don't know, but there is something that listening to some interventions to be seen, and now Joseph has has given an interesting. I can, to, sorry, I can uh, see uh, Yishin is talking, but we cannot hear him. We cannot hear you. We don't hear you. Yishin, we cannot hear you. But also, is Joseph around? Yes, I'm here. Jo Joseph, what do you think that in the use of codes? With the logical rules that you build the codes, you may have a lot of um, grinding stuff to, to think about. I mean, we, without the codes, no complexity is possible, neither in computers nor in, in, in our human beings and in and, and, and all our information based systems, but via codes, via codes. Yeah. So let, let me try to answer, Pedro. I yeah. think you cannot, cannot avoid having codes in the way you describe, but it's not the complete answer because the code itself is a static thing, unless you can tell me otherwise. I, you, it's, it has to be static so that you can reproduce an organ no. or something like that. No, no. But it Sorry. cannot, a code cannot change. No, no. But the code is the constraint for the dynamics. Without the code, you cannot have relationship between architectures. 
between okay. dynamics at different levels. You need Coda's to, constraint to, is fine. The dynamics more than constrained, more than yeah. constrained. and the, the the dynamics follow other rules, and those rules are what we have not gotten into enough, I think. But is what I'm trying to do. But then you have to have the both of them, obviously. Yes. But you would have to admit that code is evolving, Pedro. You are right on that. Codes are always evolving in yeah. evolving systems, always, always. especially in biology. And if you would consider the uh, electromagnetic code, <laughs> which uh, Professor uh, Levin was talking about, uh, as another code, then this could be very relevant. I would uh, consider it yeah. interesting. We have bioelectric code, mechanical code, we have yes. histone mm. code, we have, uh, I mean, there are more than, uh, in the order of 20 codes for uh, epigenetic codes, uh, nuclear codes, uh, membrane codes, but, uh, but bacteria have only three or four. And the oldest computers have maybe 10, 50. Now they have hundreds of codes. So I, I think we should, this is the first time I think on codes and, and as, as, as pathways for information. I don't, I, I don't want to, okay. to a slide. <laughs> Krasimia wanted to say something. Krasimia, you must unmute. Yes, thank you very much. I have only uh, one sentence uh, about new paradigm of informatic information science is uh, how to make people happy. Uh, this uh, goal, uh, I think, is the highest. Everything we have, food, uh, transport, everything, but happiness, no. Bulgarians are the most unhappy people in the world. This is statistics. So the main question for me is how to create happy people. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm not sure because I can see Yishin is speaking, but still, Yishin, we cannot hear you. Yeah. May I say some words, not to the discussion, but maybe as a kind of, of belonging to the end of this session, maybe we should stop our discussion now. Yes. I just wanted to say we still have here, I see one, two, three, four people, which I think are not yet members of our eyes for si And I would okay. like to ask you to become members if you are not so far. Yeah, so it is uh, very nice because we attended our discussion. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank yes. you. I will consider it. Thank you. Okay, fine. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, uh, I think uh, if you permit me to say several words, uh, mm -hmm. my membership in uh, IS for uh, SI was discussed uh, in the very beginning when uh, IS for SI was uh, created. And at that time, uh, we have mis misunderstanding about how to participate. And uh, till now, we not solve this problem. Uh, maybe somebody knows that uh, I'm leader of uh, a very great uh, structure uh, idea with uh, uh, many possibilities. And uh, I want to remember to many of you that you are you have your own journals at your own conferences, but you forgot for this. I do not disturb uh, during these years, but I hope we may collaborate very deeply uh, to uh, achieve this goal that I say, to make people he he uh, happy. Uh, our conferences are absolutely different than other conferences because I try to organize an uh, uh, environment where people may interact and to be happy. So I, I hope we may establish more good uh, cooperation. At that time, uh, 
I think we do not understand each other, what we may do together. So till now we have such situation. Thank you very much uh, for this invitation. I think uh, we may solve this problem in the next weeks. Yeah, thank you. And in general, I think that uh, it is uh, uh, good to try to build uh, as wide network as possible. Uh, here, uh, there are present two visitors, uh, Dennis uh, Nagy uh, and Vera Vienna. Uh, uh, they are coming, they, they were co organizing with me of Symmetry uh, Conference. And uh, Vera, Vera is uh, organizing the conference next year in July. On symmetry, and there are always connections between symmetry and uh, and uh, information. So, but what is most important is we should try to uh, bring down all walls between disciplines of knowledge, and and this is so great that Kashimi uh, is here with idea. Uh, that uh, Dennis and Vera are here uh, representing uh, SIS, Association Related to uh, Symmetry. And this is what uh, like I uh, try my dream about uh, the summit was to try to bring people together to build understanding, uh, cooperation, uh, discussion. So this, this I think is the most important thing. So I think that at this point probably we should uh, end our uh, our uh, session, and this will also conclude uh, 2021 summit of uh, IS for SI, and uh, I wish the best to our uh, co-presidents, Pedro and Yishin. And uh, now I would like to uh, request that they will take care of uh, all this, uh, all this uh, trove that you have, all this treasure that you have, uh, which uh, are recordings from, uh, from the summit. And of course, we will be working, and especially under the direction of, uh, uh, of Mark Bergen, on publication of, of uh, papers. So uh, this is uh, the end of the summit, but it is beginning of uh, work on uh, publication of the results. Thank you very much to everyone involved in the organization. Yeah of uh, uh, conferences Thank uh, you. and I, uh, I, I, I'm really happy that uh, we managed to get three, it was sometimes uh, like there were technical problems in our funding, but uh, mysteriously we managed to go through all these difficulties and oh, I yeah. think uh, this will be uh, End of, of the summit. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Martin, you are a superman. 2.15 a.m. in Tokyo. 2.15 right now. And you are chairing yeah. the entire yeah. day. So congratulations, yeah, yeah. superman. Thank Symmetry you Thank you. 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 Thank and also, Krasimir, where are you? I mean, I remember the summer conferences you organized, and this could be a good idea for us. A wonderful summer conference in Bulgaria. I did, they are wonderful, wonderful. So Welcome. let's meet together in the beach. <laughs> yes. It will be very nice to meet you in Varna. We continue organizing now. It's a very good place and very healthy. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. People come and all are healthy and happy. Healthy and happy. Yeah. Yes. So thank you very much. It was very nice to collaborate. Yeah, thank it's a big person much. also to see Dennis again many years ago and greetings. Greetings from the part of you seeing a mind to everybody and, and see you soon. Okay. okay. Nice. Thank you and see you. Thank, thank you, Marcia. Thank, thank you. Thank you for all, Marcia. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye.